Hi everyone, it's great to be with you here today and great to hear everyone else's presentations. I'd like to share with you today um, a bit about my research paper, uh, which is really kind of the initial stages of working out of my PhD thesis. It's integration of schools and community infrastructure and network analysis. So my background is I'm an architect and this PhD is connected with the Building Connections Schools as Community Hubs ARC linkage grant. So really what I'm looking at in my PhD research is tying together these three fields of understanding. Looking at schools as the learning environments, looking at community as the social environment, and looking at social infrastructure as the physical environment. And tying these three elements together, this project is, is aiming to understand how these come together as community infrastructure networks. So from a starting point of community hub schools, it's interesting to note that state governments across Australia are pushing this idea of community hub schools and schools providing assets to their community and acting as more than a school. There are a lot of synonyms for these community hub schools, which I'm sure have been raised during the conference, community hub schools, full service schools. Each of these have nuanced definitions which generally refer to schools that have shared or co-located facilities and or services, which can be accessed by community members, generally outside of school hours. And these are often located in new growth areas and new suburbs. So most of the literature that is around of community hub schools is typically um, where the school still remains as its own bubble or has its own boundary and there is some form of community access, community facility or community services which are located within that school boundary. And there's lots of great research happening in this space, including my colleagues. But this scenario doesn't necessarily work in all situations. It's a great way of utilising school assets and, and making those facilities work harder, especially in new growth areas and new schools where there's space available to provide these extra facilities and to be designed in a way that can be shared. But for schools in existing urban environments and new schools in, in these dense urban environments, there's not always that space available or the money available to provide those additional facilities on school sites. And thinking about that, what I'm interested in exploring is kind of stepping out, stepping back slightly from the schools as community hubs and looking at schools as uh, one part of a community infrastructure network where they both provide facilities for community and access community infrastructure, which is happening already in certain situations. And this research is looking at ways of understanding these networks. What are the network effects and what are the connections that arise and what's the value? So first step is really trying to understand well, what's happening now. How are schools currently sharing facilities? What we need to find out is what facilities are being shared? How is it working? So that new developments can have data and backing into these shared facilities that they're designing and building. And also how are schools accessing offsite facilities? We know it's happening, but there's no data collected on, on the extent to which this is happening. So I'd, 
first step is I'd love to collect broad data from across Australia on how this sharing is happening. To what extent is it happening? First step of my research is looking at the existing literature. Because there's not a lot of research around at the moment in community infrastructure networks, what I'm trying to do is pull together literature from other disciplines such as education research, infrastructure policy, urban design theory, human geography, sociology, and others, and to gain an understanding of the issues that are surrounding community infrastructure. So zooming into some of these areas, looking at um, Ken Fisher's paper on schools as social capital. Um, in this paper, Fisher speaks to the question of, this really speaks to the question of why we're connecting schools and communities and what's the benefit. So Fisher just defines social capital as dependent on trust, reciprocity, networks and cooperation. And he also says that given the concern for safety is uppermost in society, these ideas of trust, reciprocity, networks and cooperation are seemingly deliberately designed out, which is removing the opportunity for social capital. So given this is, was raised back in 1998 and still the same issues are being discussed, it's really important to, well, one of the things I, I wanna look at during this research is, is think about how both safety and connection can be achieved. And I know this is a question that a lot of people are working with and, and answering in different ways. So I'm looking forward to seeing how this is being tackled. Zooming in on social infrastructure and infrastructure networks. Interestingly, Infrastructure Australia included social infrastructure for their first time in their infrastructure audit last year. And within the audit, there's a lot of references to social infrastructure networks, but how do social infrastructure networks occur in practice? There's no data looking at, looking at how these networks operate. And then what even are networks? I guess if you look at networks as most basic form of, of nodes with connections linking them together. If you're thinking about community infrastructure networks, the facilities can obviously become the nodes, but what are the links in these networks? This is one of the main research questions that I will be trying to map through this PhD process. And what's happening now? So we've got community facilities, in Australia, which like schools have historically been standalone buildings. So they're not kind of understood as a network originally. That's not how they developed. And same with schools. And then we've had we've had studies showing that in Victoria, as many as two thirds of Victorian schools are sharing their facilities. But there's a knowledge that there's not much coordination of this activity. So in wrapping up, this project is starting from the point of how we can better utilise school assets, taking a step back and looking at how schools can operate with a network or do operate within a network of social infrastructure and how we can conceptualise the network and how can this assist in making decisions about what facilities are needed where and for what purpose and what does the network analysis show us? Thank you.